I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Very early on, about the second year of my priesthood, I experienced a great crisis. I experienced a rejection, not from the usual people around me, but my brother priests, no less. They made me feel that I was different. I was worthless. And the bishop sent me to a place, a beautiful retreat house, very solitary, very quiet. I guess he figured that I needed the silence. But it was a deadly combination coming from a trauma, having yourself and your emotions was not a very good thing. I can say it was the lowest point in my ministry because I was left alone. I could not even practice and do the things the priests are supposed to be doing. I was limited to giving retreats, facilitating recollections. I was lucky enough if I could even concelebrate at Mass or I could even say Sunday Mass. And in every prayer that I spent throughout that whole year, it was always the same. The same anger, the same pain, the same suffering, the same desperation that I kindly offered to God. At my lowest point, I thought that God didn't care. I thought that He was lying when He wanted me to be a priest. And that he loved me. But sooner or later, something came to my mind. And I was struck by the amount of selfishness that I had. Selfishness in the sense that it was just, I was just thinking of myself and my problems. I was wallowing in, in pain and suffering. I was licking my wounds, in other words. I was nursing my wounds. And that brought me to realize that I had to stop thinking and being selfish and start, you know, noticing things that are around. I began being thankful of people who helped me in my solitude. People who brought me food, people who called me for dinner, people who I enjoyed several social drinks with, people who cleaned my room, people who would ask me, Father, do you still have this or that? Do we need to supply you with this or that? And um, it was an amazing experience, finally to take off my glance at myself and look at how God remains faithful not only with people but situations and at the end of all of that cruel year the pain may not have gone away but I had a new perspective in life that God never abandons us. All He wishes is for us to notice how much He loves us, how much He cares for us, above and beyond our selfishness and our tendency to just think of ourselves. In our passage, Jesus said, I have conquered the world. And that itself is very reassuring. He says that He has told us all of this predict, 
predictions about what things are to happen to him because he wants to have he wants us to have peace and that's the peace from God not the peace that we understand but peace in a sense that no matter what happens in our lives no matter what trauma or pain life throws at you God remains constant God remains loving God remains ever there you just have to see you just have to recognize you just have to look beyond yourself